Hey guys. Um, so, we are going to talk about our first handheld game console, the Sega Game Gear. Game Gear is an 8-bit handheld game console released by Sega on October 6, 1990 in Japan and on April 26, 1991 in North America and Europe. The Game Gear primarily competed with the Game Boy, the Atari Lynx, and the Turbo Express. Boy, what a crowd. The handheld shares much of its hardware with the Sega Master System and is able to play its own titles as well as those of the Master Systems the latter being made possible by the use of an adapter. Containing a full backlit, uh, 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 I'm sorry, containing a full color backlight screen with the landscape format, Sega positioned the Game Gear as a technologically superior handheld to the Game Gear, to the Game Boy. Well, let's just see how that holds up. All right. Where's the stop button? Oh, there it is. All right. Well, here we are again. To continue this this console reveal, and with us we have the Game Gear. First, I'm just gonna show you the one I have. It's broken. It's this black one. It's the original edition, and it's broken. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna set that aside. And then we have the current one that works. But this, the sound doesn't work really aware, very well. But that's it, it's the sports edition. But it does work. But you have to go like this. You have to look at it like this. Instead of like this, you gotta look at it like that. In order to see it. So it's gonna be hard to videotape our games that we're gonna play. Then the games look like this. I do not have a boxed one so I'm sorry about that. But that's Sonic and Chaos. This is the manual for Sonic and Chaos. Or Sonic the Hedgehog Chaos. I don't know which one. And then uh, just for extra points um, uh, the instruction manual for the Sega Game Gear itself. Alright, well, that's, I, oh yes, we had to go into more depth about it. So as you can see on the front, we got ourselves with a die pad and the uh, one and two buttons and start. There's no reset. Um, on the top, you got your power button that it just turned on right there. Then you got your, your phones, your your volume, your extension for to connect another um, thing, another Game Gear. I'm afraid to unplug this thing because I'm afraid I'll lose it. But that's what it looks like. I'm just gonna put that right back in there. And your uh, AC adapter port. Of course, you don't need one. Of course, you have your your battery slot tray. You get two of them actually. It requires six batteries. The only problem with that is that it's a lot more expensive that way and it drains them in less than five hours of gameplay. Yeah. Whereas the Game Boy only required four AA batteries and um yeah it, it 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 drained them it didn't even drain them it it, it got done in like 20 hours maybe 30 hours which is a lot <laughs> all right well that's a look at the console itself the handheld itself um so Um, now let's go to the games. I need to get used to this camera. Alright, so the first game we're going to try out is Tailspin. If I get the freaking thing to work. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry it's black. 
it's pitch black, but <laughs> that's because the I I turned off the lights so you could see better. <laughs> see the game better, that is. You can't see anything else better. There you go. By the way, the volume doesn't work on this, apparently. Tailspin, I think, is based off of um, the Jungle Book. I'm going to go as Baloo. Alright. Oh, yeah, I can see way better on this one. Oh, crap, they switched on the... I can't see a damn thing. Where the hell am I? Oh, okay. So, I did not have anything good to report about this game. I think they switched what's on in like an NES controller. So that's always good, right? I mean, this is Sega though. So that, that could be a point. But still, I'm just used to be what's on... I'm just used to what's on an NES controller. And this is where I say I would get out of the game because I just messed the fuck up. I meant the freak up, but, um, you know, I don't know what to do here. So I'm just going to play around for a bit and then I'll move on to the next game. We have three games lined up. I think you'll be happy with my selection. Hopefully you will be anyways. Besides this game, this game's kind of a iffy game. <sighs> Yeah. Alright, well seriously, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? Walk like I'm on the moon. What, how did I get back here again? I don't even know. Let me turn the brightness down. I can't see it. Okay. Well, that's all for that. <laughs> Sorry. Alright, next one up, I believe, since I can't really see it, it is Batman or Bartman meets Radioactive Man or something like that and I need to blow out the cartridge real quick there we go SEGA Flying Edge Bartman meets Radioactive Man. Okay, I was right. And then the last one is like a really, I think is a good, a, probably the best game. We saved the best for last, you know. Not all the time, but, you know. To everyone, Swamp Hags. I didn't get to read that. Oh, it's this game. Well, fuck. What the hell am I doing? You hear me tapping buttons. I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to... Oh, I jumped in a cave. Or a ditch. Yeah, kick that dog. Ooh, fuck. What is this? Oh, it's a projectile. Oh, it respawns. This is some Ninja Gaiden shit. Ninja Gaiden shit right there. Sh 
Shit. Fuck. I meant, I meant, okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry for my loud mouth. And for my foul mouth, rather. Yeah, kick that dog, and oh my god, yay, 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 because your sex takes me to paradise. Okay, don't start singing now, Steven. Um, so this game, yeah, <laughs> sucks ass majorly. I don't even, it's test, I don't, I don't know what to do. So, we're moving on. We still got five minutes left, so hopefully that gives us enough time. Or no, we got six minutes left. Let me find the game in the dark. Is that it? No, that's PGA Tour Golf. Oh, it was right next to me. Okay. <laughs> Better be safe than sorry. Alright, now here we are. We got the, the best... Probably one of the best Game Gear games I have is... Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Chaos, I think it's called. Let's see if I'm right. Yes, Sonic Chaos, okay. Uh, of course I want to be Sonic. Why the hell are you even asking me? I hope you guys can see it on the camera because I can't even see it on the actual thing itself. I can see it on the camera, though. Um... Usually I have to tilt it like that in order to see it in real life. But luckily we could see it on the camera. Shit! Your mom is a... Humpster. I fought in your general direction. Okay, that's enough of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh shit, the poo poo. Oh, 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 your poo poo. Oh, yeah. Why am I being so weird? I'm so sorry, guys. Not really. I'm not sorry at all. Here, let's get these rings. Uh, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. That's the second time me saying this in this episode. But really, I just don't want to die the first time, so. Do 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 What the hell was I in? Your mom! Yeah, I beat it. Alright, I beat the first level. Well, I know that didn't really prove much about the Game Gear. But, uh, at least we played some games. So, I hope you enjoyed some sort. You know what, I'm not going to end it off because it's not even done. But, yes, I did. I do hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. So, see you then. Gosh darn it, I had the camera all set up, and now it's messed up. Come on! Okay. Thank you. Um, so the Game Gear was pretty popular, popular, the Game Gear was pretty popular, but not as popular as the Game Boy. But like I said, it was still popular. However, due to issues with its short battery life, Lack of original titles and weak support from Sega, the Game Gear was unable to surpass the Game Boy, as I already said, selling 10.62 million units by March 1996. The Game Gear was succeeded by the Genesis Nomad in 1995 and discontinued in 1997. It was re-released as a budget system by Majesco in 2000, under license by Sega of course. Reception of the Game Gear was mixed, with praise for its full-color backlit screen and processing power for its time, criticism, criticisms over its large size and battery life, and uneven reception over the quality of its game library, which as you saw with our video, with our, um, 
with the games we played, wasn't all that great. But that Sonic game did look pretty cool for a handheld. Um, but we still got our fun, fun fact left. Over the course of its lifespan, the Game Gear also received a number of variations. Later releases included several different colors for the console, including a blue sports variation released in North America bundled with the World Series B Baseball 95 or The Lion King. A white version was also released, sold in a bundle with a TV tuner. Other versions included a red Coca-Cola themed unit bundled with the game Coca-Cola Kid and the Kids Gear a Japan-only variation targeted toward children. Well, that's all for this console reveal. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys got some information out of that. Other than that, or without further ado, I should say, let's end this episode, because I'm running very little out in time. All right, bye-bye. Where's the off button? Right there.